Alright guys, now welcome back. We're going to have a little bit of a look here at what kind of perks we would run on the Huntress and why we would run what we are currently running. Now let's talk about the Huntress. She moves at 110% moving speed. She has about a 24 meter, maybe about 28 meter lullaby, which is pinpoint directionable. Not like Freddy Krueger's. Freddy Krueger's lullaby is actually the same range. This being said, you cannot tell which way Freddy's coming from unless you hear him stomping around or the sound of him coming through grass or the actual animation move of grass or crows being disturbed. The Huntress, you can tell whether she's coming from the right or whether she's coming from the left making a lot of tracking and hunting for her a lot harder to do because the survivors are always going to know what direction you're coming from even if you choose to hide your light which is a very advanced technique which happens a lot here in dead by daylight now because the huntress moves at 110 percent moving speed she needs something to enhance her performance to catching a survivor therefore she has a throwing axe she carries five throwing axes by default. Her charge speed is 2.2 seconds. Just wind it up and release it as quickly as possible. At about 3.5 seconds, she has it fully charged where it can go very fast. Now, knowing her default charge speed at 2.2 seconds allows you to vault windows, crouch, vault windows, sidestep, make a lot of different plays. Makes the hunters have to be preemptive about coming around the corner charging it, but me paying attention to make sure the survivor does or doesn't commit to animation lock. I will explain that very, very shortly. Now, let's have a look at our add-ons. Now, quite frankly, the easiest thing right now to have a look at is the Iridescent Head. The Iridescent Head allows you to one-hit a survivor and down them pretty damn quick. Normally, you have to hit a survivor twice with throwing axes to down them, but with the Iridescent Head, you can only do it in one. Now, comfortably, a lot of people think the Iridescent Head and the Infantry Belt are the best combo. The Iridescent Head re reduces your hatchets by four, giving you one. Therefore, the inf Infantry Belt will give you an additional two, allowing you to have three instant injures at all times. You are correct. It is the strongest possible thing you could have on the Huntress. However, a lot of people undermine some of the really powerful things. I do not like the glowing... Um, concoction. It's not bad. Don't get me wrong. When you hit a guy with a throwing axe, their aura is revealed for another five seconds. You can maybe wind up and get another hit if they run in a straight line. A lot of people will zigzag. A lot of people will get to a pallet, get to a window. It could be okay. Don't get me wrong. This is going to allow you to give them mangled. Mangled is pretty much the equivalent of sloppy butcher, making it a slower heal, and it also decreases their repair speed for 120 seconds. It's not that great. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't stack with the begrimed, uh, the rusty head. I do not recommend it. If I wanted to play a little bit harder and play correctly, the 2.2 second wind up from the Huntress can be reduced by 12% by running the Babushka. The Babushka is a very powerful add-on when it's incorporated with the Mana Grass Band or alongside the Oak Half. Now, a lot of people do not understand that both of these add-ons do stack. This is 12% and this is 8%, giving it the default of 20%. Before the patch nerf a while ago, this by itself was 20% and it was affected by Tinkerer as well. And then I don't remember what this was, but you could have instant wind-up hatchets and letting them go. It was terrifying. These two do stack. A lot of people would prefer this though. This reduces the cooldown between hatchets. So why would you prefer this? If you are pulling up a hatchet and a survivor is running for a window and he does a cute spin and you miss with your hatchet, this is going to allow you to recover quick enough and M1 him while he medium vaults the window without full momentum. As opposed to this, it's just going to allow you to wind up quicker for a fully charged run going for a longer shot at the distance. Both not too bad, right? Looking through her other things, she has a couple of okay ones. Now, Hindered, like I said, reduces movement speed of a survivor by 5% for, uh, for 30 seconds. It could be a pain in the ass. It makes you move at 95% movement speed. You will notice that there is no killer in Dead by Daylight that reduces your movement speed with a hindered effect by 5% um, that has 115% movement speed because it would be too broken. I know what you're thinking. Wait, go wait, Goose. The clown's ability. You're right. The clown can reduce your movement speed by 15 and 20% whether he has the glass of bleach as well for two seconds while you're in the smoke. But we're not here to talk about the clown today. We're here to talk about the Huntress. Okay? Can be good. It just slows, slows down a survivor. They can still dead hard. They can still fast fault. They can still pull the pallet down. It just makes you essentially 5% faster by making them 5% slower. I still do not recommend it at all in the slightest. So they are some pretty damn good add-ons on the Huntress. She can be pretty great. Lock is glow. It doesn't matter. You'll be able to understand where lockers are with due time. Right. Looking through the build. Now the Huntress is a very slow killer. Okay. Now, to make up for the fact she's 110% movement speed, you're going to have to take advantage of the fact that you need to know where you're going, right? You cannot go looking for survivors because you do not have time. The hag can, if she really wanted, she could prep a trap there. She can do some finger paintings there, maybe cycle over here, do a little bit of art and rotate there. The trapper can as well, but the trap is 115. Because you're 110, you need to know where you're going. A lot of people run whispers on the Huntress, and I say no. You will see a lot of professional streamers. You'll see a lot of people that aren't streamers that run it, they just run Whispers as their fourth perk. Now we're going to go for the stock standard Huntress build here with a bit of a twist. Alright, because I'm slow and I need to get around the board, I need stalling at all times. 
Yet again, we're going to fall victim right now to running the random gambling perk, also known as Ruin. Hey, I need to know where I'm going. If I am stalling the game, which is what I have, I have a stall. Now I need something to locate survivors in my favor. There are quite a few options for this, but right now we're going to fall victim to running barbecue and chili. Very important. It is going to allow me to throw cross maps around the map as well. Maybe get a lucky hit on a survivor if he's doing a generator in the middle of the field on rotten fields. Can help. This third perk is optional. All right. A lot of people would say nurse is calling. I'm going to put Nurse's Calling on here for just for now, and we'll see how we go, right? This is going to allow me to know where I'm going. If I'm cycling looking for survivors, and I see somebody heal, I could just, boom, change target and go straight for that person. If I had something to slow down the game, even better. Floppy Butcher is going to slow down the heals even longer, making it go from 32 seconds to 40 seconds, making it a much more intense and harder experience. Now, this last perk, a lot of people would fall victim to running Whispers. They're going to go hunting for a survivor. They're going to see Whispers near a Jenny, and they're going to walk in, and they're going to investigate every fucking corner until they find an urban evading Nia or an urban evading Megan just waiting to sprint burst away. It happens more often than not, okay? That's where people commit to the chase for too long. They tunnel, they don't get the pallets, and then they lose multiple jennies, and then they camp for one hook save. You should not be investing more than 15 seconds without a pallet or a hit on somebody. That is what you want. If you are investing more than 15 seconds, I'm not saying run away. I'm saying you're making a mistake. You will now have bloodlust. You need to get the pallet or get the hit, and then you need to rotate. Obviously, if the guy's using the last pallet and the shack in the corner of the map, take him down. But just know how much time you're committing. Because you're 110% movement speed, time is very important for you. Okay, my final perk is what I'm going to choose for situational awareness. Like I said, I need to know where people are. Much like Freddy Krueger, I don't want to waste my time putting people to sleep and then rotating. I need to know where a mass group of people are. Because the, uh, the Huntress can throw a hatchet and almost M1 straight away, she has a lot of lethal potential that people don't understand or realize. Okay, I did forget to mention that she has an exhaustion add-on. If you run exhaustion add-ons, gross. That's all I'm going to say. Ugh. Anyways, we're going to move on right now. The final perk that I choose to run on her would be, you guessed it, chat, Discordance. All right, Discordance is going to allow me to know where multiple people are. However, at the same time, if this was me playing the Huntress, I would get rid of Nurse's Calling and put on Pop Goes the Weasel. I'm going to know where people are from situational awareness. I'm going to know where I need to go for regression. You could run Iron Maiden uh, if you wanted to f uh, faster re refill on lockers, if you want to know when people are hiding from you. But you also have an add-on right here, which is going to allow you to reload faster than the perk of Iron Maiden. I don't think it's actually worth it. The only killer I'd recommend Iron Maiden on would be the Doctor, and that's the... Uh, circumstantial as well okay so looking right now i have something to slow down the game i have something for situational awareness i have something to allow me to hunt the survivors you'll notice there are yet again there is nothing to speed up the game in my favor something like the trapper who should be running enduring brutal strength bamboozled something to help him out and assist him yeah she doesn't have any because she can play smart with her light hiding and her hits yeah a good huntress will know when to pull up at a pallet and know when to walk through a pallet if you do not know Replace Nurse's Calling and put on Enduring. I'm telling you right now. A lot of people might laugh at you for it, but until you understand when to respect the pallet and pull up a hatchet and when not to, you're going to get bullied hard. And you need to understand that. That is your hugest weakness as a Huntress. Because she can be seen over a lot of jungle gyms, it can be hard to track with her. It can be hard to hunt. Remember, pinpoint directionable lullaby. She can be really hard to play. She can be really easy to verse, especially if she doesn't know what she's doing. Okay, so looking back here, we could replace Nurse's Calling with Pop Goes the Weasel. Personally, I wouldn't, unless the circumstances were like, shit, I think I'm going to be gen rushed. If I think I'm going to be gen rushed, I'm going to see two or three toolboxes. If I see two or three toolboxes, Nurse's comes off, on comes, uh, but, uh, on comes Pop Goes the Weasel. If I still don't feel comfortable, I see three med kits. I might go, Nurse's Calling is a good idea, don't get me wrong, but let's go Sloppy Butcher instead. I could even get rid of barbecue and chili for Pop Goes a Weasel as I have uh, situational awareness with Discordance. I have multiple different options of what I need to do and how I need to adjust my build. Did you notice I just gave you a trade out on all three perks except for Ruin? I think Ruin is a risk and risk is reward. You should gamble ri uh, Ruin with the Huntress. There is no ifs or buts. She's too slow. She has pinpoint directionable lullaby. You need to get lucky or you need to understand. You need to know your rotation, know your pathing, know your commitment, know when to change. Best thing that can happen to a Huntress, somebody's coming in for a hook save. You throw a hatchet and you hit the guy. You run in, you M the guy who just did the hook save. Then you throw a hatchet at the guy who in the back and he's got BT and he's running away. 
best possible scenario that could happen for you. You hook that guy, then you hunt down BT. That's two people immobilized, one coming for a save, one doing work, therefore only one Jenny being done. That's a good scenario. Another good scenario for you is one on the hook, one on the ground, and one in chase, meaning the last guy's being altruistic. Another scenario is one on the hook, one in chase, discordance pops, and you know where two people are. Discordance. There's a lot of scenarios that can make really well. A lot of people will tell you nurses, uh, whispers instead of uh, discordance, and I say don't listen to them. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, this is giving you guaranteed knowledge. Not there might be two people on it. There are at least two people in this direction here doing the objective as opposed to whispers, which is somebody's around. Is he in the locker? Is he urban evading? Is he in the fucking basement? Who knows? Do you know? You can track with whispers. I've explained it in my other videos how to do it. It is hard. It is not easy and it requires one person being in the 32, not multiple people. You know, if you're good with whispers, you can walk up to a Jenny and go, okay, nobody there, nobody there, nobody in this corner. Okay, somebody in this corner. And you can cut off the rotation. But at the same time, you can do the same thing with discordance. Knowing where you're needed. Not knowing where you can chase a Dwight down and hook him for the first time, get deliverance and DS. Knowing where there are multiple people, your highest chance of success rate. Alright guys, that is probably going to be it for the Huntress. I will quickly show you what I would run if I wanted to win as the Huntress and on what map I would play. So looking through the offerings right now, I am not going to play the game offering. It is not bad as her, don't get me wrong. I'm going to change my build a little bit more. Now remember I told you I would run what I want to run and how I would guarantee my win on that. Now you, a lot of you are going to think I'm absolutely insane to recommend this. I would recommend this map right here. Going to the Asylum. The best map you could get would be Father's Chapel. If you get screwed and you get the other map, which is the nurse's map, the asylum, doesn't matter, okay? The chapel is small and killer-sided, right? You can get from point A to B. There is always one generator that spawns in the middle of bumfuck nowhere past the carnival. Everything else is generally kind of grouped up and situated, allowing a slow killer such as the... Um, the Huntress, the rotation she needs. There's not really a lot of pallets or jungle gyms you can't hit over. This is going to allow me to take advantage of that, right? In the middle of the map, there is one generator, which we all know, with a balanced landing window and a balanced landing ledge you can fall down. Knowing the jungle gyms around it, there are always two pallets around it, both of which are shit pallets. You can easily get hits around and over them. Keep in mind, barbecue and chili is going to help me out a lot. There's not good locker distribution throughout the entire map. There is in the center. At the same time, this is going to be really good for you with the build you have. Obviously, like I said before, Iridescent Head and Infantry Belt are the best two add-ons you could possibly run. But at the same time, if I was playing to win, I would not run either of those two. I would be leaning towards this. The second somebody knows you have this kind of shit, they're going to expect you to always pull up. Always pull up the hatchet. Oh, you're going to wait at the pallet. He's going to pull up. And you're going to run another lap on the pallet. You can do it so often. You're going to walk right through the pallet, get pallet stunned, broken. Then you're going to walk up and you're going to try to pull up. All you're going to do is that. If you are too heavy on the hatchets, it's going to hurt you. However, you would think my next one would be mana grass or you'd think it's oak shaft. It is not. If I was playing to win and I know what needed to happen, I would change this on for this right now. Exhaustion add-ons. Nobody likes an exhaustion add-on. Everybody hates it. Everybody hates it on the clown. I do not blame you. It is really frustrating and annoying to verse. There's nothing worse than a Huntress hitting you with a throwing axe and then just M1-ing you when you can't dead hard or defend yourself because you're in the middle of nowhere. However, would I change this build? On the fact that I know what map I'm going to, I would be comfortable to play with this build on both sides of the of the um, asylum, okay? If I knew I was going to the nurse's map, would I twist or tailor anything in the build? To be quite frank, no. I would leave it how it is now. Scrolling through right now, there is nothing I would be interested in trading, right? You could put on Sloppy Butcher, you could put on Enduring. The pallets, the jungle gyms are really obvious and are easy for you to hit, right? They're comfortable maps. You know, the asylum's shaped like a big circle. Uh, you know, the Father's Chapel's a box. Just depending on this, when I say circle, I'm talking about the placement of the generators. As opposed to the chapel is placed like a box with one generator far away, therefore making it more like a cone shape. But this being said, this would be the best build I would recommend for the Huntress if I was playing to win and I wanted to guarantee my 4k. You'll notice I didn't recommend an Ebony Mori again, but I did recommend a map which is very easy to hit over all the jungle gyms, except with maybe two on the entire map. Alright guys, so that's it. Can you dead hard through a hatchet? Yes, you can. So that's going to be all for the hatchet, um, for the Huntress chat. You guys wanted to know about the Huntress and there's your details.